All right, so here's my finished painting. We'll go into the vlog in just a second. I just wanted to show you finished product. So what do I think overall of the school? Since this is my final painting, I love the video quality. It is amazing. The editing, the production put into his videos is outstanding. Um, I mean, top notch. There's, there's almost nothing you could do in addition to what he's doing that would make it better. Is that good? So the value for the money for 20 bucks, all you can eat paintings kind of thing is excellent. Very, very cool. Um, let's see the forum is one of the best features. That's one of the things you don't know that you wanted it until you see it. Because normally you'd go on Facebook, right? You have a dedicated Facebook group for whatever you're doing. And that Facebook group would comment. You could post your stuff and get feedback. But he's integrated that into the forum. So everything is sort of on the site. And you can restrict your post to public or just site members and things like or just friends and things like that. And it has full Facebook functionality, you know what I'm saying? Like like, love, shocked expression, comments with photos, um, making friends, following people, etc. So that's, a, again, it's an amazing feature. Overall, it's a, it's a no-brainer. Even if you're a stone-cold newbie, like you've never picked up a brush before, you still will get so much benefit from the school. Because it's one of those things, like if you're, if you're in sports, right? and you try something that's that's really really difficult you tend to lurch forward in your skill level very quickly because your mind and your body is trying to get to this expert level right so it's kind of a thing hang around with people that that you know you look as mentors rather than people that waste your time you know same kind of thing i think if you're a stone cold newbie this will really launch you forward skill wise but i mean obviously be prepared for you know that gap where yours is not going to look exactly like his you have to work on it so you're going to have some frustrations if you're just a stone cold newbie uh, intermediate and advanced will probably get the most out of this the fastest obviously so, I mean, obviously I've done realistic paintings before. This is not a new thing. So I got a lot out of it. A lot of techniques that I didn't know to do. I now know. Um, so I've done 11 paintings. I'll do more just to get my money's worth kind of thing. But I won't vlog them. So anyway, I mean, let's go to the vlog of me doing this. And hopefully you've enjoyed this series. I'll do some more reviews of different schools to get sort of get an idea of the different types of schools that are available that you can subscribe to and all that stuff. But for now, we have the Michael James Smith. Extremely impressed. I cannot recommend this enough. Especially oil paint, man, instructions. There's a lot of $150, $200 single instructional videos out there. And before you would spend that, I would highly recommend you just skip to MJS's stuff and, and do that. Save yourself a ton of cash. And each lesson is like six to ten hours. And there's a dozen lessons on there. Anyway, um, here we go, skipping to the vlog. All right, we're done with video two. Uh, let me push this light back. All right. Um... So video one was base coats. Now remember I did those in oil. So this this is the reference and this is my painting in case it's not obvious. If it's not obvious then that's great. I did good. <laughs> okay so that's the reference. I had it printed at Office Depot, Depot and had it on high quality photo paper so it it should be a perfect color representation so um you can tell i lengthened the neck so i did this on 12 by 12 i lengthened the neck and mistakes were made so you could see this weird white right there that comes into that but other than 
that part of the neck being messed up. I think the rest of the neck looks okay. I think the spout looks okay. So I think the dimensions are all right. I did trace because this seemed like something you really needed to trace. Once it's dry, I do need to come back these yellow highlights right there. I need to get mine a little bit brighter. Same with the marks on here. I need to get them a little bit brighter. So I think overall it looks pretty good for the amount of time I spent. So this is the end of video two, which is an hour and 17 minutes, which is quite some time. So, I mean, normal videos I think he's done before have been like 45 minutes or 50 minutes, but yeah, hour and 17 minutes for video two. Um, so next video, obviously we're gonna move, I think we're pretty much done with the spout. And I believe we're gonna move to the uh, pour. So the pour here, his pour and my, well, yeah, his pour and my pour, I think are pretty similar. We're gonna get into tweaking the colors because I know that right here, that's a bit darker and mine is not dark enough. And as well as right here, some of the darker highlights, I don't think I have that. And I believe that we're gonna move into video two or three, sorry. I think there's only six videos, five or six videos. So I know next we're gonna start moving into here. Now, my champagne color here is way, way off. So I definitely need to get the color fixed, but for a base coat, it's good. It, now that did dry overnight, so we're pretty close to the color that we need to be. We just need to put the highlights in, as well as there's some fog in the glass right here, and I don't have that. So when I go to make these lights, I'm not gonna be able to do it in this upper part of the glass because I don't have the fog. So uh, that's gonna be one of my first things I do is come in with the fog as well. So overall, pretty pleased with video two. I did fix the bump on the neck right here by putting in white. I'm going to need to come back and do a second layer on that. It's not perfect, but overall, uh, I will back it out a little bit so you can see better. Again, reference photo on top. I think I'm pretty close, close enough to where I think the real, realism is there. Just need to pick out those bright highlights once it's dry. So uh, we'll see you after video three. And we are done with part three. So obviously we worked on this. So the bottom one's mine, top one's reference. Um, we worked on this, which I think matches pretty close. We finished the pour, which I think is pretty close. And then, sorry, we finished the spout. Oh, is that called a spout? We finished the spout and then we finish the pour, which is the liquid coming out. I accidentally found a slow evaporation thinner, which you're like, so what? But um, because it evaporates slowly, and even after you dry it completely off, the thinner is still there. So I can make a one half of a millimeter little circle with that brush because the thinner is still there. I mean, it, it does not evaporate fast. And so the thinner is still present. Therefore, I can make these microscopic little bubbles. Uh, I mean, I should be able to almost replicate most of the bubbles. So pretty exciting. I'll do another video on it just to show you what that is. It's called EcoSolve by Natural Products or something. Anyway, I'll do another video and I'll, I'll give you a demo. So I like my spout and I like my pour. I think it matches pretty well. I did have that little bump right here and I went over it with white. You can't see it, so I'm hoping it's not visible. I had an issue right there where um, it wasn't perfect and I addressed that and I think we're good. So... I'm assuming next video we're going to sort of 
shade in this area here which has to be shaded otherwise you don't see that light so in order to see that light we need to make that not pure white across here so that's what I work on first and um, then I need to define this line here a little better so I'm gonna break out that thinner I'll tell you what I have a, a microscopic like one hair brush that I uh, bought from somewhere else to do miniatures with. I'm going to break that out and I'm going to do uh, tiny little lines with it and see how that works. So I'm pretty excited. I can't believe this thinner works as well as it does. So I'm very, very excited now to finish the project. Overall, I think my 1 through 3 looks good. Uh, I'm going to try to blow this out by the end of the day here. So I got three videos to go, but I think I should get done. Worst case, I can do the bubbles tomorrow. Worst case. I think the bubbles probably going to take a, a healthy hour. Minimum hour. Healthy hour. Um, maybe two. So we'll see. We'll see. Right now I'm going to move on to the next video and I will see you on the other side. All right, done with video number four. So this needs to dry. Um, I think we're down to the bubbles and the base of the glass. So I'm going to need to go into the base of the glass and do a lot of work, I think. I want to extend it down a bit more than what it is in the picture. So I'm going to have to Google uh, champagne glass. Try to figure out how far down it can go, blah, 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 blah. So I'll do that tonight and get a couple of good pictures and just sort of get them ready for reference. I uh, clean out my brushes and I think I'm calling it a night. Um, I've worked three hours today, so five hours total. It's a six hour project, so I should only be one hour more than his videos. So that's encouraging, I'm glad. I sort of skipped ahead a couple of places as well. So I think it's going to work out fine. I look at the reference and I look at my painting and it looks pretty close. So uh, we just need to do the bubbles. Again, that's going to take quite a while, and we still have this, um, you see that little white spot there? I don't have that white spot here, so I need to do that, and then I think I need to blend. You see this area here where it goes into the champagne? On mine, it's not blended the same. So I need to blend that a little bit more. I don't like the fan brush for blending. In fact, I hate it. I think I'm going to order me some mop brushes. Um, I need something other than this fan brush, man. This fan brush is going to kill me. I swear to God. So he uses this fan brush and it leaves little fan brush hair marks in the paint. So instead of blending that into that, it'll leave these little hair marks like blended up. And if you if you move it in a circle, then the hairs get caught in the paint and it drags it. I hate the whole thing, man. I need a mop brush. I need a mop brush is what I need. So I'm going to get a mop brush and probably just do that uh, maybe tomorrow or something. So anyway, let me get everything in frame. All right, so that's my painting so far. I like it. Uh, needs a little color correcting. I can see the colors aren't right on the camera. Let me move this. How can I swivel this a little bit like that? There we go. That's better. Okay. Now it should be a little more clear. All right. So um, we'll do video five and six tomorrow. I think I'm done for the night. And then uh, I'll come back after video five and show you guys uh, probably do five and six together actually. I'm going to do the bubbles and fix my blending. And I think I'm just going to call it at that with a couple of minor corrections. So, all right. Uh, thank you for joining me. I will see you at the conclusion. And we are done. Fun lesson. No complaints. I enjoyed the lesson. I made the, the bottle length a little bit longer. 
I put the white in up here like I said I would and I did a lot of little bubbles. So I timed the bubbles it only took 42 minutes. So that um, slow dry Eco Solve solvent, that slow dry solvent helps a lot. It really lets you do bubbles for I mean almost 30 minutes straight and it doesn't dissipate as fast as normal solvent. So overall I was pleased with that and I really enjoyed this lesson and I think I have produced a fairly decent painting. I'm happy with it. Definitely going to throw that up on the wall. So thank you for joining me and I hope you have enjoyed the video.